Hey YouTube, I am Belbarev, and this is probably going to be my competitive deck for Vanguard. Actually, with the amount of money I spent on it, it's definitely going to be my competitive deck for Vanguard. That or Prisms. Um, it is duos, and it's the current build I have of it. Um, one more thing of note is I don't play four copies of Olivia, mainly because she is $60 each, and I'm not exactly keen on spending $60 a piece for Olivia. I know that doesn't really make all that much sense, because I am running three Mirror, and I did order two copies of Mirror, and they were 38 each, but I don't know at the moment whether or not it, I want to spend $60 on an individual piece of cardboard. So, more likely what I'm going to be doing is probably going to a card shop or ordering Academy of Divas boxes and just saying, fuck it, I'll hope I can pull a Olivia, which could be more expensive, could be cheaper, but I just haven't had the time and have been too lazy to do that as well. So, this is the current build I have. Despite the fact that it doesn't have Olivia, it still runs fantastically, and it can do a lot of duo things, which I'll let you guys figure out. There are some weird build, weird text I do have in here, which may not seem standard, but I assure you everything flows pretty nicely. So, starting Vanguard is... Frick, I don't even know her name. Love Singer Darling? Lovers? Whatever, close enough. Um... She soul charges herself, bounces all copies of a duo card that you have on, or of a duo rear guard that you have on the field, which is incredible with peace, because you can draw like four cards with her with peace, which is fantastic. And then four draws. I like the artwork on Tigris, so I'm just running four Tigris and the dark card. And then eight crits, Shannon and Chulum. A nice added bonus of Chulum is that if you end up drawing her, she can still do stuff because if you bounce a rear guard. She counterblasts one, puts herself on top of the deck, and then searches for the exact same rear guard that you bounced your hand. Which is solid because it recycles your crits, and you don't have to just rely on your legions to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. And it gets you uh, cards that you need. Because this deck is pretty much all about grabbing multiple copies of X cards so that you can utilize it to a better extent. Uh, then you got your mandatory four heals. I mean, you don't have to run four heals if you don't want to, but I feel as though four heals is not a bad choice. It's just my opinion. And that's all the triggers, because you can only run 16. Whee! And here's where it gets weird. Um, people play four Lulus. I play two. Why? I don't have room. The grade one lineup is very tight, and there are other grade ones that I don't want to drop. So I only have room for two Lulus. Does it matter? Not particularly, because if you can use her correctly, it's pretty much irrelevant that you don't have four. I mean, you know, obviously, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. Lulu? Four Lulu? Whatever the heck I... However many Lulus you put on the board. If you put like three or four Lulus on the board, they're getting huge attack power. It's good for that turn, but you need to figure out a way to get them back in your hand afterwards. I mean, now that I've got... Like, I used to not have three mirrors, and I'm going to say now with three mirrors, probably it's a lot easier to get the Lulus on the board. But, again, I don't have space in my grid one lineup, and I wanted to choose draw power over power. Power. Physical power. There we go. And here it is, the four copies of Peace. Again, I dropped the two Lulus for two more for two more copies of Peace, and then this was something else. But basically, Peace, when she's uh, bounced a hand, she counterblasts one, you draw a card, and they reveal up to three, you have to reveal three copies of Peace, and you unflip the damage. So if you have it with, as I said, uh, Darling, you bounce three, you counterblast three, draw three, reveal it three times, unflip all three damage. Fantastic. And it basically thins your deck and gives you a bit, really big hand that you can use as a fan. 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 To rub it in your opponent's face that you have more cards than them. Because, I don't know, maybe you're a dick or something. I don't know. Um, I'm running three copies of Kazuha. She is basically a grade one booster version of Roan. <clears throat> and since Roan is never in stock at the online store that I try to order Roan from, and she's never in stock as I said, uh, this is a really good substitute. Because, for starters, um, you could be boosting a Vanguard with her, and the Vanguard could be hitting for some idiotically high number. As long as the Vanguard connects, you get the effect. It's the exact same effect as Roan, too. Except you don't have to counterblast a card with duo in name, but you do have to bounce a card with duo in name. Which I guess, in a sense, makes Roan more versatile. But at the same time, in, in another sense, makes her less versatile because she has to have a duo in your damage zone. But then again, you are playing duos, so technically both both of these conditions should be irrelevant since you are playing duos. But it's a grade one boosting version of Roan. And I play three of her because it basically allows you to toolbox your deck, which is beautiful. Uh, four perfect guards. Kukri, 
I am not running Aria, even though Aria is a duo, duo because Kukuri's got this cute little ability of allowing you to unflip damage if there's one of her in your grave after you've used her. So, you do counterblast quite a bit with this deck. I mean, you do also unflip damage quite a bit, but this is one of your main ways to unflip damage outside of uh, Rika. Um, also, something else to note, I am not playing Cura, as you saw, because you actually, I don't think you actually need her. And, and this, I've done draws with, or I've done games with this deck, and I haven't actually seemed to have uh, had any issues uh, with damage. But, anyway, she unflips damage after she's been used, and she's a perfect card. So, really good, in that sense. That's all the grid ones. Yay! Uh, grade 2s, as I said, to Roan, because Roan is never in stock. I, really, I, it's a $6 card, which is perfectly fine, it's completely within my budget. It's just never in stock. It doesn't matter if it's like a... It, it's... Give me some Rones, guys! That's all I'm gonna say. So, yeah, it's... Rones never in stock. She's cheap-ish, but you can never find a copy of her in stock. And it's, it's understandable. She's a good card. And she's ideally the only thing you ever want to ride when you hit grade 2. Because there's so much else that has good utility as a rear guard. She works both, but... Yeah, she's never in stock. Anyway, so I'm running two because I only... Pulled two from my Divas Duet boxes. Yay. Not really. Uh, three Rika. This is mainly to compensate for the fact that I'm not playing Cura. Uh, before it was two Rika, two Cura. Uh, but now, because I don't run Cura, I'm playing three Rika so I can get to this card more frequently than if I didn't have uh, the three Rika and I had the two Rika, two Cura. And as I said in my Pacifica video, she soul charges one and counter charges one when she's bounced. So that works really well with uh, lots of cards. And again, if you're doing this off of Mirror and you can able to get two uh, Rikas on the board, you're you're set. You're, you're smiling because you're just like, oh, I'm going to add two to my soul and I'm going to gain additional unflip of damage instead of just a one for one. And then you're feeling really good about yourself. Uh, for Sudaria, I am running the one random light one just for everyone who has like OCD or whatever. I don't know. For everyone who bo is bothered by that, it's because I like the artwork of this more. Meaning I should probably order and just play four of these instead of... Uh, one of it and three of the dark art. I actually like the light art more. But yeah, she's the 12k attacker and it's good early game if you can draw in the multiples of her because you can put pressure on the board. Plus, in addition, when you're swinging with your rate plus mirror combo or just a mirror combo in general, she's a good hitter, honestly. <clears throat> and then two of the legion mate that I never used the skill of. Why? I use, I have peace. I don't need her. Aside from the fact that Olivia is... Olivia? No, I keep mixing that. Victoria it requires her. She's really lackluster otherwise. That's just my opinion though. Uh, two rates. Um, two rates and an Eternal Sister Mirror. Um, I'll tell you this, I'm thinking of just dropping Eternal Sister and playing a third copy of Rate, which is probably a much better choice, even though Eternal Sister is a very solid uh, starting Vanguard. Again, this is part of your main combo piece for Rate plus Mirror, because it's the one that allows you to stand multiple times, and Mirror bounces everything back to your hand. So, it's good. And again, you can get like seven attacks off with this because swing with or swing with rear guard, swing with rate, mirror skill, bounce, call two, uh, sure. And then rate does her swing or whatever. If she doesn't hit, counter blast two, discard two, stand her, swing with rear guards again, swing with rate, mirror skill, bounce, call, and then swing with rate. You get like six or seven attacks off. It's pretty good. Swing with rate and then swing with your other two rear guards. So yeah. It's a fantastic way to put pressure on the board, and it's primarily why I would say duos are one of the better versions of Bermudas that you could be playing. And then, one Eternal Sister Mirror. Um, in regards to extra vanguards, I do play nine grade threes just because I want to see my grade threes more frequently. So that's something a bit different than maybe other people play, because I know most of the builds of Four Strides came out, or before the Academy of Divas set came out, around four rate, four mirror. Which you can do that, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But I just have a habit of playing 9 grade 3s in some of my decks. Again, the extra grade 3 also gives you more stride fodder if you end up running into trouble. And again, she's a good standalone, but I will probably, I'm thinking I will probably drop her for a fourth copy of Rate. Just because, like, she, she does the exact same thing as uh, Roan and Kazuha for, to an extent, so she doesn't need to connect and attack. So all you do is you counter blast, yep, counter blast and soul blast one. Bounce one to hand, add one with the same name from hand, and then you soul charge one from hand, which is, you know, it's fine. 
it's just would I rather be using her or would I rather be swinging with Rate? And I'm like, I thought to myself, I'd probably be rather swinging with Rate. So yeah. And then the probably one of the best cards in the deck, three mirror. Um, yep. High rarity, good effect means an ex it's an expensive card, but um, she's the break ride for duos and pra probably the best break ride in Bermudas right now. Um, I'll just explain the effect for everyone who doesn't know, even though I'm pretty sure if you're watching a duo video you should know. But um, when you hit limit break four, so you do need four more damage, which is not a problem. Sometimes it is, but it's irrelevant. When a unit rides her, uh, it gets 10k and gains the effect of counter blast one. When it attacks, you bounce all your other rear guards and then call two. And then, you know, as an added bonus, you do get the 2k additional power when you have three or more rear guards, which is not too difficult to achieve, but yeah. She's the main break ride, and if you get rate plus mirror, you're, you're smiling because you're swinging for. You're, you're not swinging for high numbers, but you're just swinging a lot. And it's a good way to, it's really good to pressure your opponent. And then the last card of the deck is three Victoria, which is your Legion, and that's, you know, late game choices. If you need to toolbox your deck to get to another copy of Peace, um, or to get to another card that you need, she's good in that sense. So that's why I play three Victoria. Um, <coughs> okay, so moving on to the Strad deck. Again, I would like to acquire at least two Olivia's because Olivia is incredible. I'll explain what, what Olivia does for everyone who doesn't understand because I do have a Olivia. I just need to get one more to get her live. But anyway, so I'm playing three Somni. It's the budget stride for those who can't afford the other strides or can't obtain the other strides. So um, what she does is if she hits, she bounces one to hand and calls another one from hand. It gets 3k, which is not too bad. Honestly, it's it's good for it's fairly good. Again, it's nothing compared to what Olivia can do. And then I'm playing two Amores. Um, her skill is on is the when she strides, you bounce two. So the bright side with that is that she can, uh, if you have like a piece or something on the field, primarily if you have piece on the field, you can bounce your two copies of piece and then get both their skills off, which is nice. And then one Nectaria, I would like to run one more copy of her one or two maybe because her effect is really good and I can use her in my prisms um, if she hits and you have a vanguard with prism in name you bounce one or if she hits you bounce one and if you have a soul card not vanguard I apologize with prism in name you call one from hand it gets 5k if you have a soul card with duo in its name you add the one you add another copy from deck to hand of the one you bounced so I've seen people running two copies of her and I really think it's a good idea which means I need to go and acquire a second copy but she is cheap compared to this card here. So yeah, um, basically Olivia is the best, probably one of the best strides that Bermudas have, if not the best stride. Um, <clears throat> I need to remember what she does, I'll just read the card real quick. So, you choose a face down card named School Atoll Olivia from your G-Zone and you turn face up. When it attacks a Vanguard, if the number of face up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, you can pay the cost. So you do have to have strode, 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 I think strode, once already. And then she basically acts as a fucking mirror. You choose five of your, you choose up to five of your rear guards. If they all have different names, you return them all to your hand. And then if three or more returned, you choose up two cards from your hand, call them to separate rear guards in different rows, and then it gets one crit till the end of that battle. So she doesn't work with peace, but you can still return like uh, several cards and then give her one additional crit, which is probably why she's a really good card. Anyway, so that is my entire duo deck. Where's the starter vanguard? Where are you? My lovers have left me. There we go. So that is my entire duo deck. Uh, recommendations outside of buy four copies of Olivia because I already know that I need to do that. Um, are we welcome. Uh, any suggestions or texts or changes you think I should try out in the deck? I welcome them. And other than that, I am Babble Rab and I will talk to you guys later. Be looking forward towards a Prism deck profile happening probably within the exact same day that the Pacifica deck and this deck are being shown. So yeah, peace.